So, Pop, we're talking about this concept and this truth that oftentimes, you know, life's interruptions mm -hmm. that come in a myriad of ways and shapes and forms, circumstances and situations, oh, many that you know all too well about, but life's interruptions are oftentimes God's invitations mm -hmm. to go deeper, to be stretched, to be grown, to experience new levels with Him. And, you know, you have certainly been, at your own admission, invited into uh, recently deep places with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of all that, how are you doing and how's it been going? Mm -hmm. It's been rough. Uh, the last six months, man, it's been real rough. The roughest part of my life that I can remember. Um, I'm, I guess I've been six or seven times to the ER sometimes three o'clock in the morning, sometimes six o'clock in the afternoon, mm. all night long. Pain that is off the chart. It ain't no 10, it's gotta be a 12 or 13. Uh, it's been some rough, lonely nights, uh, excruciating pain, uh, fear that I'd have to go to the hospital in the middle of the night and I have to wake Vicki up and tell her to take me. Uh, it, two o'clock in the morning, it was just me and Jesus. Mm. And uh, Jesus wasn't doing a whole lot of talking. <laughs> And I was doing a whole lot of begging and crying and crying for mercy. But uh, I'm doing better. I'm regrouping. God's uh, doing a work in me. And uh, no thank doubt. you for that. Um, I want to ask you a question, and uh, I'm well aware that it's unfair. Um, but yet, yeah, in light of all that you've been through, it was six months ago. Um, that you were given the diagnosis that what was, you know, uh, prostate cancer then became um, also a, an aggressive bladder cancer. From that, chemotherapy would then ensue. Um, at the end of that, we're awaiting for, uh, you know, a really intense uh, surgery, um, providing that you're healthy enough to undergo that. And if you were given the opportunity to rewind the tape, they go back six months to erase the diagnosis, allowing you to forego all of this. In light of what you've been through, even with Jesus, um, would you take that opportunity? And would you circumvent this? You know, six months ago, you would have asked me that. Not a, anybody with a sound mind hmm. would say, that's a stupid question. Yeah. Of course I would. But because of what God's doing in my life and what he has revealed to me in those dark mornings all alone, just me and him, he, he revealed to me, and I see it crystal clear, I was shallow, and I was getting shallower. And I know I'm 72 years old, but I'm just a boy in his sight, and he ain't finished with me. And he invaded my life. No. He, invaded, he invaded my life, but it truly he invited me to go deeper with him. I, I took it as an invasion. But he invited it was me really to, an invitation. It was an invitation to go deeper. Now, you know, uh, even from my own vantage point, uh, not only do I speak on behalf of myself, but I know others that would certainly agree with me. For you to make the claim that at 72 years old you were shallow, um, that certainly needs to be, you know, quantified due to the fact that, you know, here you are in the latter years of your life. You have faithfully walked with Jesus for 50 years, been wrung out, you know, for the gospel. You buried your first wife, who was the love of your life in your early 20s. She loved Jesus. You've raised five children. You have, you know, planted churches, raised up disciples, uh, raised up pastors. Um, you know, been married loyally to mom um, as a shining example, the both of you for now 40 plus years. And to say that you were shallow, please unpack that for me. Amen, I sure will. You know, um, at that time, my kingdom was food and drink. I mean, I've done, like you said, I've raised, I got a boy who's uh, three boys that are assets to the community, a police officer, a fireman, a wonderful pastor, he's got his father's looks, 
Let's, let's uh, talk about that, the pastor, for a minute. Hey, man, I love to. I talk about you all day <laughs> long, boy. But um, I uh, have a son-in-law, and I have a daughter who loves me, and who uh, she don't come around as much as I'd like her to, but uh, but it, it caused me to get shattered. Mm. I figured I could ride this thing out. And uh, I was quite content. Mm. But God, thank God he didn't look at me and say, Thou fool, tonight your soul is required of you. He said, Son, 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 I gotta, I gotta, I'm inviting you to come deeper with me. Mm. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> but he has. Part of this is part of senile. Vicky says it's the Spirit of the Lord upon me. I don't know what it is. But he has invited me to come deeper with him. Wow. It's been great. And it's, I know I got a rough battle to come, but it's a win, win situation for me because uh, I know who holds the tomorrow and I hold his hand. No, he holds my hand. Mm. It's all good, man. <laughs> Amen. Your perspective of the kingdom has mm. changed dramatically. Yep. He's revealed things to me in my spirit, only I know. Mm. Uh, he's been a wonderful father. I got a scripture I want to read to you. Uh, David stopped over this morning, and I believe it was God. He stopped over. He said, Papa, I was thinking about you. I read the scripture, and I want to listen to this, Paul. It's in uh, Psalms um, 73, on a New Living uh, Testament. It says this. Verse 24, you guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on this earth. My health may fail. Hmm. My spirit may grow weak, but God remains a strength in my heart. He is mine forever. Those who desert him will perish, for you destroy those who abandon you, Lord. But as for me, how good it is to be near my God. I have made a sovereign Lord my shelter, and I will tell everyone or anybody that will listen to me about the wonderful things you do to me. He's a great God, Paul, and uh, he's been a, uh, he's taken me deeper, mm. and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. He took me from shallow to eternal principles, and eternal uh, insights you know you uh you you sit here and you sound like the fulfillment of uh the scripture that says that jesus is the author and the perfecter and the finisher mm -hmm. of our faith and um to my own shame i would have thought that at 72 years old though we all say that no one on this side of glory arrives at perfection but i was sort of under this precept that at 72 years old if you haven't reached perfection well then mm -hmm. he lets you just sort of you know take elective classes mm -hmm. until you cross the finish <laughs> Amen, line I hear you, boy. but yet you show me that uh he never stops no he doesn't he never quits inviting us and um i just want to say that you make the invitation um, so appealing and you make the invitation inspiring uh, that it seems so worth taking. Wow. And so I hope that I have half the character mm. that you do that when my uh, time comes that I want to be done mm -hmm. and yet Jesus still invites mm. me, mm. I accept. Amen. I love you, man. I love you, buddy. I'm a hero.